welcome back this is the second part of my explanation of the perception how it works and the intuition behind it it will be based on the first part so you can uh, watch it first for things to make sense now in the last video we stopped at this slide when we try to explain things in plain English and now we'll speak about um, training in perception so training and learning so remember the idea is we're trying to find a line or a plane or a hyperplane to correctly separate two classes which are which are separable uh, by adjusting the weights and the bias we train the perceptron to respond to each input vector so we have our input data we have several instances some of them are of class 1 some of them of class 0 each instance will have an input vector so those variables those uh, features like x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 that is seen as a vector as one dimensional array it's uh, uh, presented as an input to our perceptron and we want to produce a target value of 0 or 1 i.e. the class of that point now for the uh, theory behind the perceptron there is a theorem that says if a solution exists it will be found in finite time so if the data is linearly separable then definitely we can find it if we implement things correctly more detail about the procedure what we do is using our training data uh, we begin by initializing the weights and give them maybe zero or small random value usually a value between zero and one maybe a real value of zero and one for all the input uh, um, for the, all the inputs and the bias so if, if you remember from the last video if we have four inputs then we need five weights one for each input uh, variable and the fifth is for the bias we need to pick a small learning rate usually between zero and one again so the learning rate remember controls how much we change the weights and bias to find the point where the error is uh, zero or no more errors and then we do the following so we go into a loop until stopping condition is satisfied a stopping condition maybe we can loop until uh, the error value is zero or we can loop until maybe a maximum number of iterations is found just to avoid falling into an infinite loop if the data is not linearly separable so what we do is we go through each training instance so we go through them one by one and the instance now is a vector of inputs and the class so the actual means the actual class of that instance x here is a vector of, po of, of, of the inputs of the points or the I'm sorry the features we compute the output acti uh, the activation output the activation output is uh, the predicted output now and the, activate, uh, the, the predicted output now will be a function the weighted sum of all the inputs with the bias now and then we do the thresholding if you remember from before so we compute the output which is output equals the function of the weights and the inputs incl weights including the bias and then we apply the learning rule the learning rule says uh, we can find an error value the error value now for that instance now is the output value the difference between output value and the actual value so output minus actual and then we modify the bias by say if that value is not zero by the way if the value if there is a difference between the actual and output uh, then we update the bias and the weights if there is no difference if that's zero then there's no need to update anyway it will be zero anyway because we multiply by the error yes as you can see so the new value of the bias will be the original the previous value of the bias plus m which is the learning rate times the error and then for all inputs now at that point if you remember let's say we have five inputs of five features and for all of them the weight for the ith uh, input equals the previous value of the weight of that ith input plus the local the error here this should be this should say error times m which is the learning rate times the uh, the, the value of the of that input the ith value of that input this will make sense in the implementation as you will see so w is the vector of weights x is the input vector presented to the network output is the correct result I'm sorry output is the result and actual is the actual uh, 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 
actual is the actual uh, 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 value of the class so output is let's say the predicted value let's just correct this to say the, this output is the predicted value is the predicted uh, class let's say output is the predicted class and actual is the actual output actual is the actual output of the neuron and b is the bias so actual is we should get and output is the value we get and then we can put the difference we call it the error b is the bias i hope that makes sense if you remember from before we start with a random line if it perfectly separates the classes then that's what we want otherwise we keep changing the weight and bias until we find the line that we are looking for now um, we go through all the instances and a complete run through all the instances is known as an epoch so it's written as follow it's written as epoch so that's a complete run a complete run through all the instances is known as epoch if you're if uh, just to go over it again we loop through all of them computing the error and then updating the uh, weights as the weights and bias according to the learning rule now again in plain english we present vectors from our training set to the network one after another if the network's output is correct then no change is made we don't, we don't need to change weights and bias otherwise we use the perceptual learning rule the one we explained in the last slide to update the weights and bias training is complete if we finish an entire pass through all the input training vectors without error so that's our uh, stopping conditions uh, if there's no error the term epoch is used to refer to an entire pass through all the input training vectors now we can use the training data now just we can present any input training vector to the network and it will output the correct output now if we have a new vector unknown vector not from the training data let's say from a test data we present it to the to the to, to, to the um, to the perceptron so it will be a vector of values the input values the network will tend to exhibit generalization by responding with an output similar to target vectors for the input vectors close to the previous unseen input vector p so it hopefully will classify it correctly again we extract the value of values of weights and bias if you remember the equation of that line the weighted sum w1 x1 plus w2 x2 all the way uh, and then we just plug in the values of the inputs in that equation and we compute the result if it's larger than our uh, threshold then it belongs to one class if not then it belongs to the other class as i mentioned before this is only an explanation of the intuition behind it hopefully in the next video where i, where I explain to you the java implementation things will make much more sense thanks again for watching and i'll see you next time